Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Shoe Sports Report. I'm Diana Canizaro and alongside with me is Cara Levine. And Cara, this weekend and this whole semester there's been a lot going on on campus. That's right Diana. As we begin counting the days to winter break, the pioneers are busy getting it done. Let's dive in, with, let's dive in first with Shoe Swimming and Diving Team. Shoes women's swimming and diving team had a phenomenal weekend at the ECAC Winter Championship. The Pioneers picked up a total of 962 points to finish in third place out of 12 teams over the three-day event. Sacred Heart set three school records over the course of the three-day competition. Freshman Lauren Somers led Shoe with her two individual records in the 50 and 100 freestyle events. Somers touched at 28.92 in the 50 for her personal and school best. Her time of 52.28 in the 100 was good for another school record and fourth in the event. The Pioneers record came in the Pioneers final record came in the 200 freestyle relay as Somers, Olivia Dekis, Jillian Crosby and Kayla Dion finished in 1 minute and 37 seconds. The meet proved to be a big test for the Pioneers and they now head to win a break and return to a dual meet on, at Manhattan on January 14th. Now Diana, the shoe bowling team had a sensational weekend. Why don't you tell us a little more about it? That they did. It certainly was a big weekend for the women's bowling team as they hosted their first Northeast Conference meet over the weekend in Wallingford, Connecticut. Shoe started off against St. Francis Shoe with a win and carried the momentum through the weekend, winning all 10 matches to take first place. Sacred Heart was so dominant that the second to last match of the weekend was the first time in this meet that the Pioneers were behind their opponent. Shu trailed Caldwell by just one pin after four games, but the Pioneers bounced back in the fifth game, making great shots to finish strong, winning 995 to 917. Amanda Nardiello and Sarah Morris were huge parts of the win for Sacred Heart as they came out on top in individual standings. Nardiello was especially impressive after taking over the anchor roll on Sunday. The junior filled 49 of her 50 frames. Some of the other key players included were Sarah Rhodes, who led the team, making all 31 of her single pin spares. Well, after the winter break, Sacred Heart Bowling will resume competition late in January at the Cutstown Golden Bear Invitational down in Reading, Pennsylvania. We're going to have more on bowling as Aaron Burrell catches up with the head coach, Becky Kregling. But first, here is Gino Ganello with this week's Update Corner. Gino? Thanks, ladies. Let's start this week's Update Corner off with Sacred Heart Equestrian. Last weekend was very busy for the equestrian team. On Saturday, they competed in two Western events. In the first event, Shu finished as, high, as reserve high point behind host Mount Holyoke College by three points. In the second competition, Sacred Heart rallied and earned high point team with 31 points. During both competitions, Shu placed first in eight events. On Sunday, Equestrian captured high point team in both Huntsie and Western. Jessica Shalou earned high point rider for the Huntsie competition, while Abigail Williams finished as high point rider in the Western competition. Shu will be back in action February 5th at the Huntsie competition at Trinity College. Sacred Heart Wrestling went 1-1 one one over the weekend as they picked up their first dual meet win of the season. Wrestling started the day off with a devastating loss to a tough Appalachian State team. Sacred Heart didn't let the loss get to them as they took on Davidson with strong outings from multiple individuals, overcoming an early six-point deficit. Shu ended the dual meet with a 27-11 victory over Davidson. Pioneers will be back in action as they compete in the Wilkes Open Thursday, December 22nd at 9 a.m. On Saturday, women's ice hockey went on the road as they took on Franklin Pierce. Early in the game, both goalies were tested, making amazing saves to keep the game scoreless. Just 36 seconds after Franklin Pierce's goal in the second period, Katie Stoiva found Jane Lewis to tie the score at one. From there on out, it was a strong defensive showing on both sides of the ice to place the game in overtime, ultimately leaving the Pioneers with a one-to-one -one tie. Sacred Heart then hosted Franklin Pierce on Saturday, looking for a win. Shu and Franklin Pierce traded goals in the first and second period, tying the game 2-2, but Sacred Heart earned its third goal late in the second period to take a 3-2 lead. Late in the third period, Franklin Pierce would tie the game again 3-3, making the outcome of the game look like Friday's. Again, within seconds of Franklin Pierce's goal, Sacred Heart put one more on the board with 145 left in regulation, courtesy of Megan Finley, to take home a 4-3 victory. Women's Ice Hockey hosts Johnson and Wales for a two-game series on the 9th and the 10th. 
And now, let's send it over to Aaron Burrell, who's sitting down with shoe bowling head coach Becky Kregling. Thanks, Gino. I'm here with head coach Becky Kregling of the shoe bowling team. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us today, Coach. No problem. Now, last month you were ranked 11th in the country in the NTCA Coaches Poll, your highest ranking since 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, how does it feel for you and your team to earn that kind of respect from your fellow coaches? When you work hard and you start seeing positive results, you hope people are noticing, but when they actually ranked us higher, it's nice to see they noticed it. And back in Wisconsin, there was one of the coaches that came up and told us that we were definitely a top 10 team and she was ranking us in the top eight, which the players overheard behind me and they were just ecstatic, which I think fed into them believing more in themselves and how good we could be. It was definitely a well-deserved ranking. You had a great first semester beating numerous top 10 programs. Uh, what is it that's clicking for this team right now? We have an older roster with mostly upperclassmen that are playing at least and we have a large roster so I think our communication has gotten to be a lot better which is spread into a better atmosphere in the competition area and a lot of the bowlers are just playing at a pretty top quality this season. You kept off the first semester going an epic 10-0 and in the first NEC meet of the year. Uh, with only two regular season meets left to determine championship seeding, uh, can you explain to us how, going, uh, how important going undefeated is? It's extremely important. I had not noticed how important it was going to be for the standings because I wasn't thinking about it that day. But we play each other three times, which means there's 18 matches. So halfway through, we're ahead of everybody by at least three. And we have the tiebreaker against the teams that are just below us. And in the championship matches, we get a C for the top two teams to go right into the bracket. So that gets us closer to defending our title. Our huge part of your weekend was Amanda Nardiello. Uh, taking over that anchor spot on Sunday. Can you talk about her importance and her performance and how impressive that was and how it impacted the rest of the team? The day that Amanda had on Sunday is a day that not many players get to experience in college bowling in their four years. She's been practicing well and having good matches, but she managed to put it all together. Um, we've been hoping and waiting for that day to happen, and it did. And when someone just outperforms the field like that, it makes it a lot easier for the rest of the team. The pressure's a little off, and the matches that we thought were close, we were winning by quite a bit halfway through. So it made the day a lot easier. All right, you take a few weeks uh, off for the winter break. What do you expect out of this team during the second half of the season? Well, you're always hoping bigger and better. Um, I think we can keep improving. We had a lot of cla matches that were really close with the top four teams, but we didn't finish them out and win at them. So I'm hoping that's what we accomplish next semester and we can sneak into the top 10. All right, well, that's all the time we have for this week's Coach's Corner. Thank you for joining us today, Coach. Thank you. And uh, sitting down, we hope you have a good and nice break. Good luck in January. We're going to send it over to Gino to get caught up in the Update Corner. On Sunday, the men's and women's fencing team hosted the Tradition Tournament. Women's fencing started the day off with a 24-3 loss to Princeton, but bounced back to win 17-10 in the next round against Vassar. The Sabre squad won all nine of their bouts. From there, from there it was a hard-fought day with the women losing to Harvard, Penn, Penn State, Temple, and NYU. Men's fencing had an amazing day with the epi bouts against all six of the opposing teams, but it was not enough as Shu fell to Princeton, Vassar, Harvard, Penn State, and JIT, and a very close 15-12 loss against NYU. Pioneers fencing will start the new year off at the Philadelphia Invitational hosted by Penn on January 21st. Men's ice hockey headed to Pittsburgh this past weekend with a two-game series against Robert Morris. On Friday, the Pioneers had a very quick start as they tallied their first goal within 21 seconds of the game's start. The Colonials tied the game with a goal in the first period, starting off a four-goal run. Sacred Heart looked to rally in the third, but came up short with one other shot finding its mark in the third period. Shu fell 4-2 in the series opener. On Saturday, the Pioneers looked to pick up from their loss by scoring the first goal in the second period after a deadlocked first. The lone goal wasn't enough to hold off the Colonials as Robert Morris rallied back with two goals to win out the series against Sacred Heart. Men's Ice Hockey hosts Mercyhurst for a weekend series starting 7 p.m. on December 9th at the Webster Bank Arena, with Saturday's game being the annual Jason Pagney Memorial Game held at Avon Old Farms. Track and field kicked off their indoor season at the Boston University season opener this past weekend. In the men's 200 meters, Josh Beloff crossed the line in third with a time of 22.5 seconds, followed shortly by Sebastian Pierre in, a, in fourth with a time of 22.73 seconds. In the men's mile, Trevor Guerrera finished strong in second place with a time of 4 minutes and 12 seconds. 
Guerrera earned NEC Co-Track Athlete of the Week for his performance. His time is the fastest mile in the conference after the opening weekend. Michael Kearns finished fifth in both men's shot put and weight throw. In women's 400 meters, Taylor Ann D'Agostino placed fourth with a time of 59.28 seconds. In the women's mile, Shu placed third through sixth. Kate Svensson earned NEC Indoor Track Athlete of the Week after her sensational run in the 5,000. She ran a personal best of 17 minutes, 58.4 seconds, besting her old mark by 10 seconds. In the women's pole vault, Selena Sampieri placed fifth, while Nicole Bartosz placed second in the women's long jump. That's all the Sacred Heart Sports we have for you on this edition of the Update Corner. Thanks for joining me. I'm Gino Ganello. Back to you guys. Thanks, Gino. The, now, the women's basketball team had a light weekend with a trip up to Hartford on Sunday afternoon. Now, Sacred Heart took on Hartford as they looked for their third win of the season. Shu dominated in the beginning, owning an 18-10 lead at the end of the first quarter and maintained it for a 39-31 advantage at the end of the half. But if the first half belonged to Shu, the second half went to Hartford. The Hawks outscored the Pioneers 51-25 for the 81-64 comeback victory. Senior Hannah Kimmel picked up her third double-double of the season with 18 points and 10 boards. She also recorded six assists for an all-around performance. She was now 2-5 and, and returns home tonight when they host former NEC rival Monmouth at 6 p.m. in the William H. Pitt Center as part of a doubleheader with Shoes men's basketball team. Diana, the Shoes men's basketball team had a busy week on the road and finally came home this past weekend. Why don't you get us all caught up with them? That's right, sure will, Kyra. The Pioneers closed out their five-game road trip at Fordham. The men's basketball team had a slow start when they went down to Bronx to face Fordham University. But Davon Barnett got his team going in the first half as Shu went on a 12-2 run to gain the lead. But it quickly got turned around as the Rams went on a hot streak to then take a 9-point lead at the half. Shu cut into the deficit as Sean Hone had 5 straight points and Barnett with the jumper to tie the game at 66. The Rams took the lead late 70-66 courtesy of the free throw line. Barnett converted a three-point play with 43 seconds left to make it a one-point game. Cha-Cha Tucker set up Barnett for the game-winning layup and Chu won 71-70. Well, after a couple weeks on the road, Sacred Heart then hosted Harford at home on Saturday. The Hawks took a lead early in the game, but Sacred Heart fought back and stayed competitive. Down just five points at the half, Chu broke through with a 19-2 run over six minutes to take a 58-43 lead to start the second half. But the Hawks battled through to take a two-point lead with a little over a minute left. Then with 35 seconds left in the game, Quincy McKnight, who's been a standout performer so far this season, made the game-tying layup, sending it into overtime. The Pioneers came up just short, losing 87-79. Shu hosted UMass Lowe on Tuesday night at the Pitt Center, and Quincy McKnight led the team with a career high of 34 points. He also led the team with nine boards and five assists. The Pioneers were able to get to the charity stripe, going 9 for 9 in the first half and 23 for 27 for the game. The Pioneers went on a 17 to 3 run midway through the first to take a 34 to 22 lead. Shu led by nine heading into the break, and the Pioneers coasted to, eight, to an 18 point lead, 66 to 48, with 11.44 to go in the game on McKnight's three point play. The Riverhawks got as close as eight with an 8.38 remaining. The Pioneers would go on to win 91 to 82. They improved to four and five overall and will be back again on Coach Bike Court tomorrow versus Yale at 8 o'clock. Listen to the game live on 1400 WSTC or on NECFrontRow.com. Well, that's all we have for this week. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week for our last installment before a winter break. Be sure to support all the Pioneers at home this weekend, and let's go shoe.